Hey everyone, I'm Brugly, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining Backrooms level 86,400, aka Ad Memento. This is a very unique level, and each time the clock here ticks, you get sent to a different sub area of it. So yeah, it's going to be insane. You're going to love it. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching, and let's get into the explanation, shall we? Backrooms level 86400, or Ad Memento, is classified as a class variable because everything about this level is an anomaly. And it doesn't make any sense, but I'm gonna try my best to make it make sense. The level's name, Ad Memento, means to remember, or the process of remembering, which is pretty cool, considering the level gets changed every time time passes. And the level itself has a very interesting layout, to say the least. Now, it is a complete level that gets cut up into different dimensions randomly. So even though there are sublevels, it's still one big level, just encapsulated in this one massive area. Some of the parts are dangerous and can harm human life, and some of them are safe and can be stayed in. It really all depends where you go. Sounds fun, right? Most of the level, outside of a couple of safe zones, is very glitchy and volatile and dangerous, because they can warp constantly. And the only consistent thing throughout all these weird dimensional sub-areas is an old-looking massive clock tower that you'd see from real life. This clock tower will actually take the shape and design of whatever environment it's in. So if it's in a desert, it'll look like a desert clock, and so on and so forth. On this clock, there is a huge circular apparatus type thing that has around 30 notches in a circle on it. Some people think that this circular apparatus with 30 notches controls the level and that each notch is a different setting or a different dimension that you can get sent to. And it really seems like that's the case. In fact, we know it's the case because each time a notch gets passed, you get sent to a different sublevel in a different time period. The five different landscapes. Now each of the settings or landscapes that appear in this level resemble or looks like some kind of historical or mythological location from an ancient time. These locations are very mystical and magical looking and they look like they're from real life. And a lot of it has to do with Greek mythology. Sometimes in these landscapes, there will be weird old carvings in structures like trees or in structures like walls, or even on the ground in some cases. Obviously, no one can read what these engravings say because no one speaks ancient hieroglyphs, but something has been noticed about how they look. Specifically, that they sort of kind of look like ancient texts from the real life place called Crete which is an island off of Greece in real life, which could mean that these different landscapes I'm about to talk about are different versions of the real life place. Or maybe they are the real life place, but from the past. The Maroon Isle is a landscape that looks like the Greek island Santorini from real life. You've all seen what Santorini looks like. It's the blue domed buildings on the Mediterranean, except this landscape in the back rooms has some big physical changes. Instead of the crystal clear blue water that surrounds the island, the liquid in this level has large amounts of blood in it. Almost to the point where that's all it is, just blood. And there are several weird temples on the island, and the clock tower is here too, except it's red and all viney and stuff. Everything is covered in shades of maroon red. The ground, the buildings, and just everything. Time on the clock passes pretty slow here comparatively, so it takes around five days for a full rotation of the apparatus to get sent to the next area. The island is pretty bad for your psychological health also, because all the red and the bloody ocean, it just messes you up. And there's also another thing that makes it pretty bad. And that thing is that there are random gut-wrenching screams from deep in the distance on this level. These screams can give you headaches and psychologically torment you because you're hearing these screams constantly. So the best thing to do is to just try to ignore them and just relax for the five days that you'll be here. When the clock makes a full rotation for five days, you'll be sent to the next setting, which is called the Acropolis. Now this is a strange, distorted version of the real-life Greek Acropolis that you've all seen before. Now this one is a pretty new landscape that's been found, so not much is known about it, but all the structures here look like they're about to break and collapse. 
time seems to pass pretty normally here, but the color is not normal. Just like how the first area was red, this area is monochrome black and white. And there's also been some pretty unsettling discoveries in the landscape that I can't even talk about here because YouTube would demonetize me, but they're very gruesome and you should go check it out below if you want to read it. The clock actually has not been seen here yet, but like I said earlier, each different landscape has the clock tower, so it's gotta be here somewhere. Some people think it's one of these marble statues, we don't know. But after a few hours in the Acropolis, you might be sent to the next setting, which is called the Eternal Desert. Now this one takes the physical appearance of the real-life Sahara Desert from Africa, which is a massive desert in the northern part of the continent. Now, unlike the two first areas that I talked about, this one is fully infinite and has no borders. The landscape has a dark and gloomy sky that looks like it's always about to rain, and there's also chances of huge wind gusts just blowing up sandstorms everywhere. And the sandstorms can be dangerous. Some parts of this landscape are entirely made out of quicksand, which can instantly suck you in and trap you, and you could suffocate in the sand. The clock in this landscape is visible just on the horizon as far as you can see, and it takes the appearance of a big sandstone pillar. Sometimes in the sand of this area, you can see gears or skeletons of fish slightly buried underneath it, which might mean that the sands could have been the bottom of the ocean at one time, or something else, I don't know. But after a few hours on this level, the clock will make a full rotation, and you will be sent to the next setting, which is called the Twilight Mountains. And this is a unique one. This specific zone is made up of different mountain chains from real life. The Alps, Mount Olympus from Greece, the Pyrenees, the Caucasus. It's like all these mountain chains got thrown together and mixed up and are put here. And together, they form craggy, sharp peaks that look impossibly tall. Like, taller than Mount Everest tall. Huge. There's barely any light here, just kind of a soft glow that comes from the clock tower here, which is located on top of the tallest mountain peak. It looks kind of like a stone statue, but it is the clock on the zone. Around the mountains, there is a thick forest of pine trees, and it's always dark and gloomy and foggy there as well. And some pretty dangerous entities like to lurk here, which I'll get into in the entity section, but you definitely should not trifle too deep into the woods. After the clock ticks again, you will be sent to the last known landscape, which is called the Tartarus. And this thing is a huge mystical cave type zone, kind of like one from Greek lore that's said to be underneath Crete, the real island. Because in Greek mythology, supposedly underneath Crete there's this massive opening to the underworld, and this is sort of what that looks like. The cave is swelteringly hot, and magma flows through the floor in some parts and drops from the ceiling in some parts, but the good news is, time flows normally, so you won't have to be in here for too long, just around 8 hours for the clock to tick again. Which will probably seem longer than that because of how hot it is and you'll be uncomfortable. And sometimes beside the clock, there could be seen a physical animal that resembles the real life or mythology Cerberus, which is the guardian of the underworld. And it's this massive three-headed dog type thing that's actually there, like it's in this area. So avoid that. As you can see, all these settings and landscapes seem to be tied in with magic and mystical stuff full of mythology for some reason. The question we all have is, why? Now, there are a couple of entities that live throughout these different landscapes. The first one is called the Shades, and these are those that I said were hiding in the mountain area, in the Twilight Peaks. And these are shape-shifting type creatures that look like shadows. All of them are inky black looking, and they're very different from each other in how they're aggressive, or how they're nice, or how they treat you. But some of them can be very dangerous and shapeshift into other things that can hurt you or bring you harm in some way. Their true purpose is unknown, but it's pretty terrifying to think that they exist. And the last entity that's been seen throughout these different landscapes is called the Automaton or the Automaton. 
These creatures kind of look like humanoid machines with gears and wires sticking out of them. There are also carvings and words on their bodies that are in languages that we can't understand. They're pretty aggressive and they're strong, and they normally hide in the Maroon Isle as well as the other landscapes that have been found. Both of these entities hide and lurk in the shadows and they try to hurt you or lead you to harm. It's just very dangerous overall and you should avoid them at all costs. To enter this level, you can no clip through anything in all of the back rooms while holding something that's related to time, like a watch or a clock or something, and you could be sent here. And to exit, you have to go up to one of the clocks that's throughout any of these landscapes, and you need to go to the base of it and then open the door and then go inside, and you'll be sent back to one of the first nine levels instantly. So yeah, I want to hear all of your thoughts on this level, and I want to hear your theories on why it's so tied into Greek mythology and Greece specifically. I think it's so cool that each time the clock ticks and makes a rotation that you get changed or sent to a different level. It just, that's, that's a crazy cool concept, and I really hope you enjoyed it. That's it for the level explanation. Thank you for watching till the end. If you are still watching to the end, comment whatever you want to and I'll leave a heart. I love reading your all's comments. Thank you so much for interacting with the content and everything you do. Thank you all for everything and I will see you in the next video. Peace.